Thinking in English now has a Patreon. If you love listening to my podcast and you want to help and support the podcast to grow, please consider subscribing. We run weekly conversation clubs exclusive to Patreon subscribers where you can practice speaking with other learners and other native ESL tutors. They take place every Tuesday at 12pm and 6pm UK time, so work out your own time zones. There's also bonus episodes, one-on-one classes with myself and much more. So click the link in the description or head over to patreon.com forward slash thinking in English. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. On Saturday, 10th of December, England will play France in the World Cup quarter-final. The rivalry between England and France is one of the longest and most influential in Europe. It has led to wars, battles, arguments and much more. Let's discuss the history of French and English relations and talk about why there is such a rivalry on today's episode of Thinking in English. You can find the full transcript for free over on the Thinking in English blog. Check out my Instagram page and YouTube channel, both called Thinking in English, and subscribe to me on Patreon. Here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the written list is available in the description of the podcast and also on my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. Rival. Rival. A person, company, product, etc. competing with others for the same thing or in the same area. As in, he beat his closest rival by 25%. Rivalry. Rivalry. A situation in which people, businesses, etc. compete with each other for the same thing. As in, there is a rivalry between the three brothers. Conquest. Conquest. Taking control or possession of foreign land or a group of people by force. For instance, the Norman conquest of England introduced French vocabulary into Britain. Victorious. Victorious. Having won a game, competition, election, war, etc. For instance, the victorious team were loudly cheered by their fans. To invade. To invade. To enter a country by force with a large number of soldiers in order to take possession of it. As in, the Mongolians tried and failed to invade Japan twice. Ally. Ally. A country that has agreed to officially give help and support to another one. For example, during the First World War, Turkey was an ally of Germany. To veto. To veto. To refuse to allow something. For instance, In 1961, President de Gaulle vetoed Britain's entry into the common market. Favourite. Favourite. The person, team or animal most people expect to win a race or competition. As in, France are one of the favourites to win this year's World Cup. On Saturday, December 10th, England will play France in the quarter-finals of the 2022 World Cup. Both teams will be confident of victory. France are the defending world champions, winning the tournament in Russia four years ago. They defeated Australia and Denmark in the group stages and despite losing to Tunisia in the final group game, put in a very strong performance to beat Poland. 
with world-class attacking players including Kylian Mbappe, France are considered one of the favourites to win the World Cup. The opposition, England, will also be confident of victory. England reached the semi-finals of the 2018 World Cup before losing to Croatia in extra time, and last year they reached the finals of the European Championships, but lost to Italy on penalties. They are the top scoring team in the World Cup this year and have a young team full of talent, with captain and striker Harry Kane leading his country. The game between England and France will definitely be an exciting game for all football fans, but for French and English people, the game may have extra significance. For over 1,000 years, England and France have been rivals. Rivals in war, rivals in politics, rivals in influence, rivals in empires, and rivals in sport. For English people in particular, the rivalry with the French is one of the most passionate and long-standing. I know some of my French listeners may feel a greater rivalry with other countries, but for England and English people, France have always been our national rival. Even in recent years, this rivalry has been clear. Disputes between fishermen in the sea between England and France constantly occur. And France's anger at the UK over a deal to build submarines for Australia was also clear to be seen. Today, I want to give you a brief history of the rivalry and relations between England and France. This is one of the oldest rivalries in the world, between two of the oldest countries in Europe. And to conclude the episode, I'll try to explain why France and Britain may be more similar than you think. So let's start with the early relationships. There is just 33 kilometres, or 20 miles, separating England and France across the English Channel. The ancient people of northwest France and the British Isles were very similar. The French region of Brittany, for example, is considered one of the Celtic nations, along with Scotland, Ireland, Wales, the Isle of Man and Cornwall. And both France and the British Isles were controlled at various times by the Roman Empire. This left behind similar architecture, roads and ancient towns and cities. Yet, I think it is fair to say that the beginnings of the modern rivalry between France and England came in the year 1066, long after the Roman Empire had left Northern Europe. For English people, the year 1066 is considered one of the most important dates in our country's history. Why is the year 1066 so important? Well, it was the date of the Norman conquest of England. The Normans controlled northern France. Interestingly, the Normans had actually invaded France centuries earlier. They were the descendants of a Viking leader from Scandinavia, who was given land in the north of France as a way of stopping him from attacking France's biggest cities. His descendants became the Normans, French-speaking and influential landowners. In 1066, William, the Duke of Normandy, decided to invade England. His arrival on the south coast of England forever changed the course of English history. William invaded England with the support of influential lords and families, who were promised land and roles in the country. The English king Harold had just defeated a Viking invasion in the north of the country, and William took the opportunity to invade England while the country was weak. Harold was killed in battle, famously after being shot in the eye by an arrow, and William's forces quickly conquered the rest of the UK, hence his famous name, 
William the Conqueror. The Normans changed England forever. They brought with them noble families and influential leaders. They introduced new religious figures and new churches. They built a new legal system and they introduced a new language to the country. Today, up to 50% of the English language is French in origin. Despite, or perhaps because of this, new connection to France, England and France became bitter rivals and fought numerous wars throughout the medieval and early modern periods of history. The King of France would claim he should rule England and the King of England would claim he was the rightful leader of France. France would also support and collaborate with Scotland and sometimes Ireland to work against their historical rivals England. In some wars, France came out victorious. The Hundred Years' War, which took place between 1337 and 1453, so longer than a hundred years, began after Edward III of England claimed to be the King of France. Battles occurred for over 40 years until an English king, Henry V, was declared as the heir to the King of France. However, after Henry and the king both died very close to each other, French forces, led by the famous Joan of Arc, defeated the English, supported the old king's child as the new leader of the country, reclaimed the city of Paris, and pushed England back to the coast. After the Hundred Years' War, England would never be able to regain control of French territory again. The English royal family once owned more land in France than the King of France did, thanks to King Henry II of England being a French nobleman. The English king owned parts of France from the time of William the Conqueror until the year 1557, when they lost the port of Calais. England and France were almost constantly at war from the time of the Norman invasion onwards, including a second Hundred Years' War beginning in 1689. One of the most important of these wars was the Seven Years' War from 1756 to 1763. This war was probably the first real world war. It was based on the rivalry between the growing French and British empires. Britain attempted to expand their North American colonies by taking control of French territory, and this led to war, of course. The powerful European countries and states took sides, either supporting the French or the British. After seven years of conflict, Great Britain came out most successful. They gained most of New France, so basically all of France's territory in modern-day Canada and the USA. Uh, they gained the Spanish part of Florida, um, some Caribbean islands, the colony of Senegal in Africa, and gave Great Britain dominance over France's ports in India. Victory over France in this war gave the British Empire the power and influence to become the largest empire and control most of the world's trade and seas. The last real conflict between England and France revolved around Napoleon and the French Revolution. Britain had sent armies to France to support the French nobles after they were removed during the revolution, as Britain was scared that the revolution may spread. In 1804, Napoleon declared himself Emperor of France and quickly made plans to invade England. The French and Spanish navies attempted to take control of the English Channel, the sea separating Britain from Europe, but they were defeated by the Admiral Nelson, leader of the British Navy, during the Battle of Trafalgar. In 1815, the British army defeated Napoleon again at the Battle of Waterloo, and the rivalry between Britain and France became less violent. The Battle of 1815 was the last time Britain and France fought each other in a conflict, 
and peace between the two countries was officially declared after the 1904 Entente Cordiale. Since the beginning of the 20th century, Britain and France have been allies and fought on the same side in the majority of wars. In both World War I and World War II, Britain and France fought together against Germany. Britain actually helped to free France from Nazi control during World War II. Both countries then became key allies of the USA during the Cold War. Britain and France took active roles in shaping European and Western politics and society, especially trying to promote democracy and capitalism as a better system than socialism or communism. The two countries were founding members of NATO, developed nuclear weapons and were included in the five permanent UN Security Council members, alongside the US, Soviet Union and China. France was one of the founding members of the European Community, which later became the European Union, and the UK joined in 1973. Since the 70s, France and the UK have been very close, especially in terms of military cooperation and defence. However, relations have not always been perfect since World War II. I mentioned the UK joined the EU in 1973. Well, they had actually wanted to join earlier, but French President Charles de Gaulle refused to accept their application. De Gaulle was suspicious of the influence of the USA, this UK's strongest ally, and as well as vetoing the UK's applications, he decided to withdraw France from having an active role in NATO as well. One of the biggest problems in the relationship in recent years has been Brexit, the UK leaving the European Union. France and Britain long disagreed about the direction of Europe. France wanted closer and closer connections between different European countries, which had caused concern for the UK for decades. After leaving the EU, France and Britain have clashed repeatedly. There have been arguments over the terms of Britain leaving the organisation, arguments about refugee crisis with people using France as a base to cross to the UK, arguments over fishing in the English Channel, arguments over building submarines, and probably more things that I've forgotten. So, why do the British and French still have this rivalry? Why do they still hate each other? Britain has been rivals with pretty much every country at some point over the past 1,000 years. So why does France have this special place? Well, I don't think it's fair to say the countries hate each other, at least not anymore. We are historic rivals, and we have been in competition for almost a thousand years. From a young age, we learn about this competition. In many ways, Britain and France are very similar countries. We have similar sized populations, we both have long histories of democracy. We have histories of empire and colonialism and international influence. Both Britain and France are also proud countries that they believe deserve respect. We both fear that our countries are declining and that the US, China, Germany and Japan or other countries are going to overtake and take over our roles. And I think this is why the rivalry between the two countries still exists. Because we are so similar and comparable. But we also have very different approaches and ideas on how to survive and progress in this modern world. After Brexit, many French government officials and diplomats were convinced the UK would become irrelevant and less involved in international politics. In fact, the French ambassadors to the UK over the past few years have spent more time criticising the UK than learning about the UK's intentions around the world. One consequence of this is that France were completely surprised a few years ago 
when they lost an incredibly valuable contract to build submarines for Australia. After giving France the opportunity, Australia changed its mind and gave the contract to the US and the UK. France constantly criticises the UK for being a junior partner to the US. The US is an influential country, and the UK just follows and does what they say. But France is also having to deal with being a more junior partner. Germany is the economic and political leader of Europe, not France. And again, I think this is one of the reasons why there is still such a rivalry between the two countries. We are both trying to convince ourselves that we are more important, more powerful and more relevant than the other country. But really, we are both losing our power and both losing our influence every day. So France and the UK have been rivals for hundreds of years. But how about a footballing rivalry? Well, to be completely honest, the rivalry between England and France in football has not been too important. For England, Germany is considered to be the biggest rival, even though Germans don't always feel the same. And Argentina is also considered a major rival, after Maradona's Hand of God goal and David Beckham's red card in the 1998 World Cup. England and France have played each other 31 times in competitive football games. England have won 17 times and France have won 9 times. However, many of England's victories came a long time ago, before World War II. In World Cups, France and England have only played twice, with England winning both times. But the last time they played was in 1982. In the European Championships, France have won one game and the other two games ended in draws. The rivalry between the two countries has not been particularly intense in football, but there is a chance that France and England could be building a new rivalry right now. Both countries are amongst the favourites to win the tournament, both have young and exciting teams, and both have performed well in previous tournaments. Perhaps after Saturday's quarter-final, England versus France will become a major footballing rivalry. So here is today's final thought. Today I have talked about the rivalry between France and England and Britain and the UK, I guess. For over 1,000 years, there has been some kind of rivalry between the two countries. Centuries of wars and conflict ended around 200 years ago, but the rivalry in terms of politics, language, influence and power has continued. When the two teams take to the field on Saturday and represent their countries, They are continuing a long-running and passionate rivalry. And victory would give the winners bragging rights over their old enemies. Who do you think will win the match between England and France? Who is your country's biggest or traditional rival? Let me know in the comments on Spotify, the comments on the Thinking in English blog, or send me a message on Instagram. My Instagram is Thinking in English Podcast. And also my YouTube channel is the same, Thinking in English Podcast. I upload content to both Instagram and YouTube uh, very regularly. YouTube usually once or twice a week. And Instagram, I post something every day on my stories and four or five times a week as a post. So please go and follow over there. Um, If you really like Thinking in English, please leave a like, a rating, a review or a follow Wherever you are listening right now, we're almost at 4,000 ratings on Spotify. Can we get there by the end of December? I hope so. Um, can you leave me some Apple Apple reviews, please? I don't have too many Apple reviews, so if you leave me an Apple review, I'll really enjoy that. And if you really like thinking in English and you want to 
take a more active role in supporting the podcast and also take an active role in improving your English, why not follow me and subscribe to me over on Patreon? If you subscribe, you can join our conversation club, which takes place every Tuesday. You can listen to bonus episodes. And from next year, we have some extra special bonus rewards that I'm going to introduce, including uh, special transcripts and activities and handbooks and lots of things that you'll get for being a Patreon member. So please go and subscribe. Um, And it's nearly Christmas, so subscribing will allow me to have some more money this Christmas. Because at at the moment, thinking in English is my only job. And Patreon is about 95, maybe 98% of the money that Thinking in English makes right now. So you you can actually go and see how much money I make uh, because it tells you on Patreon. So go and have a look how much money I make and feel bad for me that it's not much money and subscribe to me. Um, so thank you for listening and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.